On August 25th, 2020, at 2.40 p.m., I received an email from a stranger named Lucy. It read, Hey there, my name is Lucy. I'm shooting a short film in Connecticut. Do you want to join the crew? 20 minutes later, I replied, trying to sound nonchalant, even though I was screaming inside a little bit. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Riss. I'm a film major. So this opportunity kind of just dropping from the sky was like amazing? Hi Lucy, thanks for reaching out. I would be thrilled to be a part of the crew. When I told my parents, they were like, isn't this during the semester? Aren't you gonna miss classes? Can we talk about this before you commit? And I was like, no, because I already said yes. So four weeks later, I emailed all my professors and was like, sorry, but I'm gonna disappear off the face of the earth for a week. Also, I need an extension for basically everything. Okay, bye, see you never. And then I went to Connecticut. So at this point, I'd like to back up a little bit and discuss how easily this could have been a plot to murder me. I got an email from a stranger about a hypothetical film. There wasn't even a script ready yet. They said it was going to be shot in a small town in Connecticut that I had never been to. I knew literally nobody involved and I just said, yes. Oh, also, let's take a look at these instructions for getting to set. Go to the private road right by a hedge, continue past the no trespassing sign, go to the compound with a barbed wire gate. What? Now, when I was pulling onto this private road, which by the way, does not even look like a road that cars are allowed to go onto, I did have a moment of, oh shoot, am I about to be kidnapped? Well, obviously I didn't die, so that is great. Thank you, Lucy, for not uh, planning to kill me. Or I mean, maybe you did and it, you were just really bad at it. Or I mean, I don't know, we did actually make a film. So that leads me to the conclusion that this was a legit operation. So anyway, uh, here's my week on a film set. On Sunday, after a morning of frantically trying to finish as much schoolwork as possible, I drove the hour and a half to Connecticut. We had a welcome dinner, which was so lovely, although I was a little bit stressed because it involved several forks of different sizes and I just never know what to do with myself in that situation, but everything was delicious, so I survived. And then we went to the Airbnb that I shared with a couple other people on the cast and crew, and with a coin flip, I got the loft. There's a lot of spiders in this room. Okay, waking up really early tomorrow, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I want to go shower. Oh, I did it. Okay, I'm up. Then I just went to set, so here's my official set tour, featuring beautiful places such as Field with a Chair in It, This Thing, Abandoned House, Storage Building, and Barn, Back of the Storage Building, This Tiny House, and most importantly, This Gate, which made this sound every time it opened and closed for like 30 seconds. Every single time. <laughs> After a bit of reading through the script in the so-called production office, the actors started rehearsing. We spent the entire morning on just the first scene, and my first two lessons of being on set were how to slate and that everything in film takes a really, really long time. I already knew this from my limited experience beforehand, but I had never worked with a proper crew and cast before, and in that situation, everything really takes a really, really long time. So what is slating, you ask? Basically, it's this thing. You do it at the beginning of most takes. You say the scene number, the shot letter, and then the take number, and then you slate it, which means that you do the clap thing. Here's my job. I watch this monitor, and when they motion for me to open it, I open it. I am clearly essential to this production. <laughs> I'm just setting up for classes now. Got two classes today that I'm going to. I'm surrounded by like equipment everywhere. In case you were wondering, assignment wise, no, I have not recovered from this week. So I'm struggling, but you know what? I'd do it again. Hello, okay, it is 5.15. I just finished classes finally. I've had them since 2.30 and now I'm going back to work until like 7.30.
You know, I've just realized that I haven't even really explained what my role on this set was, but that's partially because I don't even really know myself. I guess formally I was the PA, but I also had AC duties and also carried a lot of stuff. At some point I drove a car. It was mostly a lot of carrying stuff though. But anyway, we had dinner, which was a lovely time for cast and crew bonding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And then I went to the Airbnb and journaled a lot. And let me tell you, that night was the best sleep I've ever gotten in my life. On Tuesday, I set my alarm for 5.45 and woke up at 7 a.m. It was on this day that I knew getting any real schoolwork done was hopeless. In the morning, we did some outside scenes before it started raining. I did do a lot of standing around while I was waiting for things to get in place, but that was actually kind of nice because I had a lot of time to think about life. Wait, actually, maybe that wasn't worth it because I have been having a quarter life crisis ever since getting back from the shoot. And I think in this situation, correlation is causation because I was all, oh, this is so nice getting to do hands-on work. Dang, I can't wait to do this kind of stuff after college. Wait, why am I still in college at all? You don't need a degree to do this kind of stuff. Is my time being wasted? Am I actively wasting my time right now? What am I doing with my life? So I guess good in terms of self-reflection and bad in terms of being self-aware because now I am too self-aware. Great. Anyway, later we did this car equipment setup, which was a little terrifying to watch, but it was all fine. And we successfully did not smash tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment, which is always a good sign. And then for the rest of the day, we were shooting in the stables, which if I learned one thing from this experience, it is to never ride in a stable scene because there's just a lot of lighting and everyone's stuck in this small space and there's just a lot of coordination, but it, it's okay. It was worth it. There were a lot of fun vibes. It's just a bit complicated, but it worked so well in the context of the film. So. It was totally worth it, like I said. Also, here's your film set fact of the day. Martini, I learned that martini is the last shot of the day before you wrap. When the producer calls martini, you kind of want to weep. Don't get me wrong, being on set is so much fun. I loved every second of it, but doing this and classes and trying to do homework and also not pull an all-nighter every single night is challenging. This was our really delicious dinner of the night and then we went back to the Airbnb to watch the first presidential debate, which was such a disaster that I considered setting my plan to drift away to sea on a raft into motion then and there, but I didn't because then who else would be there to hold up production by not knowing what they're doing if I wasn't there to do it. It's like 8.30, I think. So yesterday was a longer day than Monday. We actually shot for a full like 12 hours or, or I mean longer. It was a lot of fun. I'm just so tired and my body hurts and I have schoolwork to do and there's a bug on the ceiling. Okay, time to get up. So this day was a little bit of a mess, even though it was really fun and it was a really beautiful fall day. I was late to set because I thought Dunkin' Donuts would be a simple venture. Hello friends, we are going to Duncan. But somehow it ended up being a 25 minute ordeal, even though the Duncan itself is literally two minutes away from the Airbnb. So I don't know what happened there. And also it really opened the floodgates for the rest of the week because then I kept going to Duncan and spending my money. Speaking of which, I should really check my bank account. Uh, <laughs> this week's video is sponsored by Creator Cash. Has this ever happened to you? I am literally desperate for retail therapy because the monotony of everyday life in 2020 means that consumerism is the only novelty. Good thing I'm a YouTuber so I can make those sweet, sweet fractions of a cent every time someone watches one of my videos. But oh wait, Google doesn't pay out until the 21st. What am I to do? Well, that's why you need to buy Creator Cash. And by buy, I mean download for free. So Creator Cash is an app that's helping creators have more flexibility with access to their YouTube earnings. If you're a monetized content creator, you probably know that Google only pays out once a month, which is a bit of a hindrance if you're a college student like me and you need to pay your friends back for groceries, but you're like, ouch my bank account. So Creator Cash lets you get that money sooner by estimating how much you're gonna make this month based on your previous month's earnings. And then you can get access to that money before the 21st of the month. And they're launching their newest feature store, which is a digital storefront where you can set up to sell things like courses, digital downloads, even one-on-ones. Wow. So it's a new way for viewers to support their favorite creators with a one-time purchase rather than a subscription-based support system. And if you're a content creator, you can request exclusive early access by going to the store tab in the app and requesting access and then it's super easy to set up from there. So thank you Creator Cash for sponsoring me and links and all that stuff will be in the description.
Hello gang, I'm standing alone on a fire watch, which wasn't, no one told me to do that, but I actually currently have nothing to do. So I'm just making sure that none of that stuff like explodes, but I don't know what I would do even if it does. So today's also very exciting because I got promoted to helping with like first AC duties, which means like assistant camera and me being first doesn't mean anything because there's no one else to do the job here. So I'm just kind of first by default. You know, I do exciting things such as help with the tripod or the sticks as people in the industry, we professionals, Call it. Just kidding, I'm not getting paid. Okay, I'm gonna go back to standing in this field and doing nothing now. Oh, also I did go to class on this day, but very late because I lost track of time and then everyone on Zoom saw me literally sprinting around trying to find a place to do this class and then I ended up taking class in my car. Awesome. Despite being a mess, this day also ended up being really fun because I think it was the first day we were all comfortable with each other. So the silly level onset definitely increased exponentially, which was a lot of fun, but probably caused our producer TJ a lot of stress. So I'm sorry, TJ, but no regrets. So basically this day could be divided up between the time we spent giving our producer an ulcer, the actual productivity that happened, and the time that I spent sitting around and doing nothing. Would a um, camping chair actually help you? This is a camping chair. Okay. God's camping chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. Thursday was such a nice day. It was so pretty outside, but the closer we got to the end of the week, the more busy we got with trying to wrap everything up. So I didn't get as much of a chance to film. We finished the first scene, filmed some really weird dancing, built a fake fire, and then I was a driver for two seconds. And then at the end of the day, my job was literally to stand in the corner and be very quiet and pretend that I don't exist. No, I will not elaborate. And before I knew it, it was Friday, our last day on set. I moved the car around a little bit more. I've never driven a car like this before and the wheel goes so easily, it's so strange. There was definitely a lot of chaos since it was our last day, but also a weird amount of singing. Nobody wanna see us together. <laughs> oh, oh, and here is what waiting for a take to begin is like if you were wondering how it actually works. A And then finally I think we have a Okay. Yeah? Sure. Yeah? Wait, I, mean, I don't want to yeah? share. Oh, I don't want to share. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to end We it. are rats. We are rats. Thank you. Thank you.
I truly cannot believe how quickly this week went by and how much fun I had all because of a chance email. I met all of these people I otherwise never would have met, kind of renewed my life purpose, and now I actually know for sure that I do enjoy being on a film set, which is a good thing to know about the field that you're looking to go into. But seriously, this was an amazing experience. Thank you to everyone. The next day, we just said our goodbyes. Goodbye. <laughs> From Connecticut to Chicago. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then I headed home and shout out to my friends at home for being so excited to see me back. Thank you everyone for being so welcoming into this community of filmmakers and being so kind. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. So if you enjoyed this, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I sometimes give my film related hot takes. I also have a Patreon if you want to support me and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's not a club. That's not a hero. That's not a pita. That's not, that's not any type of sandwich. That's not a PB and J. That is a wrap. 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 Thank you. I'll put that at the very end of the video. Oh. <laughs>